All right, so I know a lot of you have been waiting for me to cover the recent Tangem bug, so I appreciate your patience. I spent the last few days interrogating Tangem and just doing my own research to ultimately figure out what happened, why it happened, if this is going to happen again, and what we need to do moving forward. So in this video, I'll be answering all those questions. Many of the answers came straight from Tangem's mouth, so you won't find this information anywhere else. But before I get into exactly what happened, I wanna quickly talk about my relationship with Tangem because there has been some confusion that I've seen surrounding me and my relationship with them, and I really wanna clear that up. So that said, I'm not paid by Tangem. I'm not on Tangem's payroll. I've never been paid to say anything specific about Tangem or to make a certain video. I'm also not sponsored by Tangem or any wallet manufacturer for that matter, and I never have been. Also, I wanna clarify, I am not Tangem support, so I do my best to help you guys out and troubleshoot any issues you might have, but uh, I just do this out of pure passion and because I wanna help you, I don't do it because I have to or because I'm paid to. So if you come to me with some issue and you know I try my best to help you, but ultimately I can't help you and you get upset at me, um, I don't know what to tell you. You should reach out to Tangem. Uh, that said, I also can't help you with any of your orders if you're having like some issue with your order. And if you're just going to straight up call me a scammer or anything like that, um, I am not going to help you, not only because I can't help you, um, but because I don't want to, especially if you're just going to be disrespectful to me when I'm taking time out of my day to just try and help you. That said, I'm just like you. I'm also a user of Tangem. I use several Tangem wallets to secure my crypto. Uh, I've recommended Tangem to several of my close friends and my family members, especially the ones who are just getting into crypto because Tangem is a really beginner friendly wallet um, that's enjoyable to use. So, um, I'm affected by this too. I just wanna make that clear. So what is my relationship with Tangem? Well, I'm what's known as an affiliate partner and really anyone can be an affiliate partner. You don't need anything special um, in most cases to be an affiliate. Some companies may require that you have like, uh, like a huge following, um, but a lot of these smaller uh, harder wallet companies don't really require much. Um, and all that means is anytime you buy a Tangem wallet using my link, I get a small commission um, from that purchase at no additional cost to you. Or if you use my discount code CyberScrilla, not only do you get a discount, but I also get a small portion of the sale. And currently that's the only way that I'm making money through any of these wallets. And I'm not only an affiliate for Tangem, but I have signed up for all the affiliate programs for basically every single hardware wallet uh, manufacturer there is. And if I don't like a wallet or I wouldn't use it or I've never tried it myself, then I won't recommend it. It's really that simple. So you might notice that there are certain wallets that I don't, I don't talk about on this channel and that's either because I simply don't own it and haven't used it myself or because I do own it and I don't recommend it. Um, other than that, I have been a big advocate for Tangem wallets, but not because I'm paid to be. It's really just because I like their product um, and I know I'm not the only one and I think they offer a really beginner friendly solution to cold storage. Anyways, enough of that. Let's get to the juicy stuff, the stuff that you came for, the tangent bug. First, let's break down what actually happened because it is a big deal. And if you've been on Reddit, chances are you've tried to sort through all the different threads and you've only come out of it more confused and more frustrated. And let's be real for a second. Reddit is the best place to get misinformation quickly, but it's not the best place for more rational takes. Um, and I say that because I spent a decent amount of time getting cold hard facts that I could provide in this video. That way you have accurate information. Um, and then later I'm going to explain um, how this happened, how Tangem fixed it, who it affected, and most importantly, what we need to do moving forward. So here's what happened. It was found that if you set up your Tangent wallet using a seed phrase or you imported a seed phrase from another wallet, that the app was actually recording the private keys in logs. And then if you use the contact support button in the Tangent app within seven days of activating your wallet with the seed phrase, the log, including the private keys, was attached to a support email and sent to Tangem's support team. And this is a core issue and potential vulnerability that the bug revealed. But if you didn't use that contact support button in the app within seven days of generating your seed phrase wallet, then you weren't affected. Also, if you set up your Tangem wallet as a seedless wallet without a seed phrase, you also weren't affected. And I don't wanna downplay the seriousness of this bug, uh, but I do wanna clear up some misinformation that I've seen already on Reddit and even from mainstream media outlets. Um, I just wanna say that a seed phrase and a private key is not the same thing. And what was exposed in this bug were the private keys 
not the seed phrase. The seed phrase is the master key to a wallet. So it gives you complete access to the entire wallet and all the crypto accounts in it. A private key is a key for specific accounts in your wallet. So for example, Ethereum has its own private key, uh, Bitcoin has its own private key, and you can use these keys to access those specific accounts, but you can't use a private key to access the entire wallet. Not that this is any better, but I just wanna make that distinction clear. Also to be clear, this bug did not result in anyone's wallet actually being compromised, meaning no one actually lost crypto um, as a result of the bug. And Tangem is very, very fortunate that that's the case because this could have been much, much worse than it already is. All right, so that's what happened, but why did this happen and why didn't Tangem catch it earlier? Uh, let's start with why this happened. So according to Tangem, the main issue stemmed from an overlooking of the app's legacy code. And in simple terms, the legacy code is basically an old version of the code that the app has been running for a while. In the past, this legacy code was considered secure. It had passed Tangem's internal audits. However, when Tangem added the option to create a seed phrase using the Tangem wallet, this actually created a vulnerability in the legacy code which they obviously never noticed. The second issue stems from a new NFC logging mechanism Tandrum introduced to improve app performance on certain devices. Unfortunately, this feature had a bug that slipped through during the code reviews and testing, which caused the logs to include private keys. So my question is, why didn't Tandrum catch this bug earlier? Um, to me, it kind of sounds like a series of unfortunate events that could have been avoided with a little bit of due diligence. It seems like the team may have got too comfortable uh, with some code that was previously secure, um, but they didn't reevaluate it. So we ended up with this bug, which is honestly pretty frustrating, obviously, I'm sure for Tangem, uh, but also for us. But looking forward and arguably more importantly, what did Tangem do to fix this bug and what are they doing to ensure that this never happens again? Uh, fortunately for us, the team acted immediately and released a new updated version of the app that didn't contain this bug. Also, according to Tangem, they have deleted all the emails and uh, attachment containing any of these private key files. They've also informed us that they have taken several steps to ensure something like this never happens again. So let's take a look at exactly what they've implemented. First, they completed a thorough audit of their legacy code to ensure it meets all current security standards. Uh, second, their security review process now includes a dedicated focus on legacy components, ensuring these older parts of the code are reviewed just as rigorously as new code. And third, Tangem has added an additional automated regression testing to detect potential issues with legacy code. And these tests are now a regular part of their quality assurance process. They've also completely disabled the NFC command logging in the current updated version of the app, as well as all future versions of the app. And one more massive thing that Tangem has implemented is called a bug bounty program. Uh, this program encourages ethical hackers and security experts to find and report any vulnerabilities in the Tangem app. A bug bounty program is always good because that means uh, Tangem specifically can address potential security concerns a lot quicker because there are now incentives for people with the know-how uh, to try to find vulnerabilities in the app. And if they find a vulnerability and report it privately to Tangem, they are rewarded uh, monetarily uh, so this is a good incentive to help increase the security of the app moving forward. In fact, most of the large tech companies have a bug bounty program, um, including other wallets like Ledger and Trezor, as well as like massive tech companies like Apple. They all have bug bounty programs. So I think this is a step in the right direction. So as of now, this bug has been completely fixed. And if you weren't affected, then there is no security concern. Um, that said, you can also still use Tangem Wallet with a seed phrase if you want to and have confidence that your keys are no longer logged or stored anywhere on the app or on your phone. They're only stored on the secure element chip inside of the Tangem cards. That said, you might be wondering if you were one of the people who were affected by this bug, and if you were, what the heck are you supposed to do? Well, if you were among the 0.1% of users who were affected by this bug, meaning you generated a seed phrase uh, and then contacted support through the app and your private keys were sent to the Tangem team, you should get an in-app notification uh, with steps on what you need to do next to ensure that your wallet remains secure. So here are the exact steps that Tangem is recommending, whether you were someone who was affected or maybe you're just paranoid and want to uh, reassure yourself that you're good to go. These are the exact steps that you need to take. Step number one, update the Tangem app to the latest version if you haven't already. 
Step number two, transfer your funds out of the affected Tangem wallet. You can transfer it to like a hot wallet temporarily or a crypto exchange. Step number three, reset your wallet to factory settings. I've got a video on how to do this and I'll leave it in the description for you. Step number four, create a new wallet, either with a new seed phrase or as a seedless wallet. And then step number five, transfer your crypto back to your new wallet and take a deep breath. But even with all that said, the main question remains, should we still trust Tangem to secure our crypto? And obviously I can't tell you what to do. Um, so I'm going to do my, ex my best to explain kind of my opinions and my thought process uh, with how I've kind of thought about this whole situation. So my initial thought was, is this bug an intentional attack on users? I mean, it could be, right? Anything is possible. Um, but after thinking about it for a while, I just don't see Tangem risking their entire business reputation and potential prison time to release this bug. It just doesn't make much sense to me. So then I looked at Tangem's track record. Have they had any security issues in the past? or do they have a bad track record? And the answer is no, at least not anything that I could find. Uh, they have a pretty good track record. That said, they haven't been around as long as some of the OG wallet companies like Trezor, who has been around since 2014. But Tangem has been around since 2017 and they haven't had any major scares like this one. And since 2018, Tangem has sold more than 3 million wallets and not a single one has been hacked. So at least that seems pretty promising. But then I found myself questioning whether or not I should trust Tangem moving forward. After all, there are plenty of other wallets to choose from on the market. Um, although even popular brands like Ledger and Trezor have had their fair share of issues in the past, I think the main thing to learn from other wallet companies who have had security concerns or scares like this is that they learn from their mistakes and they ultimately create a more secure and better product for the users. So after thinking this through, I came to the obvious conclusion that Tangem messed up big time. Uh, however, I don't believe it was intentional. Uh, they have been trustworthy up to this point. And as long as they actually take this as a learning lesson and the result is a more secure wallet, um, you know, I don't see any reason why I'm not going to continue using Tangem to secure my crypto and recommend it to my friends and family. Of course, that's just my opinion. I still think you should do whatever you think is best for you. Um, that said, it's always a good idea to diversify your crypto into multiple wallets, whether it's the same brand of wallet, maybe you wanna do different brand of wallets, never a bad idea. Um, also, you should know about these seven crypto security tips that I cover in this next video. Thanks for watching, God bless, peace out.